Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to All Things WordPress and WooCommerce, a Do the Woo podcast show. This show is brought to you by OmniSend, the solution for email and SMS marketing with their CRM solution for WooCommerce shops and your own website and hosting her. Whether you're building a WordPress site or specifically a Woo store, their infrastructure brings your client site speed, uptime, and security. Hey guys, welcome back to The Next Generation with Sophia DeRosia and Allison Dye. Um, Today, our special guest is Bud Krause. Bud, do you want to say hi? Hello, everybody, and thank you for having me on. We were just talking with Bud, who was wondering why our first guest is him. Because as he said himself, I am the oldest person there is for the Next Gen podcast. Why me? And uh, Sophia and I, you know, we talked about how everyone was young ones. Everyone was in a similar position to what we're in. Now, every generation has their differences, right? Like we maybe have different looking obstacles than ones that you face. But in the end, uh, we face similar challenges and how you may be facing those challenges again, in a way, as you have gotten older, right? You're facing, um, we both face, we all face ageism in the workplace, right? Like, oh, you're too young. Oh, you're too old. In tech, there seems to be this idea that you have to be like this perfect, ever young seeming age, but not too young, right? And so uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that experience as you, and maybe you too can compare it to when you were younger and older. Do you see similarities with those two periods of your life? Well, you know, you, you call to my mind that when I was your age, I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. All of this technology, the internet, the web, all that was not around, of course. And it was very hard to, you know, find my way in the world. In fact, I worked in a totally different industry for 17 years, waiting for all of this to begin. And once it did begin, I said, that's where I want to go. Um, but you're right. You're either too old or too young, you know, and maybe you're just right for a couple of years when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what what made you change from that career of 17 years to doing something entirely different. Yeah, and this is really important, I think, because as as people will see over a period of time, they will change their careers multiple times, whether they want to or not. The world being what it is will force you to. So I think part of my story is to take charge of that and not let events and changes take charge of you. It's easier said than done. I understand that, but you know that's something that you you should keep in mind. So I was, I was actually an insurance broker in New York City, and my clients were in the entertainment industry. So that was all good. Over time, I just grew to hate the insurance industry. Oh, that's fair. So when I first saw the web in 1994 ish, you know, I said, "How do they do that?" This was at a time when websites were gray background, black text blue links, and maybe a few GIFs, and that was about it. And I was just so fascinated by what I was looking at. I think I was looking at a Hungarian library website or something, and I just said, I want to do that. And I, of course, I didn't know what that was. And it took me quite a while to figure out what that was. And of course, in the very beginning, it was just making websites. Because, you know, if you went to somebody and said, you know, I can make a website for you, they either said, great, or... What's a website? Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. and that's how I got started, you know, and then I realized shortly thereafter that I was not really much of a designer. I had no experience. And so what do you do if you can't do anything? You start teaching. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself teaching uh, in businesses and at Pratt Institute and in FIT in New York City. And I was teaching, of course, HTML and CSS and then eventually WordPress so that, you know, was really my first love really is, well, my wife is, and then teach it and then my kids and all right, let's get the family out of the way. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's, um, education is really my first, um, thing that I really like to do. Um, and I'm always learning myself new things. And I think that's really important for anybody at any stage is just to keep your mind open to the possibilities of, 
of of growing and learning, okay? Because learning, we're all going to be lifelong learners. So, you know, uh, I would say you you want to make that very much a part of your life, the idea that you're going to be learning the rest of your life. You're going to want to and embrace it is what I'm thinking of, you know. Embrace that challenge of learning all your life. If you look at the WordPress, um, in the WordPress uh, community, the people that are in there are really, uh, they embrace the idea of lifelong learning from a very young age to, well, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that's what I I have learned. And like I said, um, you know, uh, I once talked to a a president of a college in New Hampshire, and we were talking about the idea of, of this changing of careers. And she said, it's not that you're going to switch jobs 20 times in your life. You're going to switch careers 20 times in your life. Mm, that's what that's she said. Terrible. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that is tariff. But you that's see, terrifying. here's the here's the beauty of that kind of a thing. So you say like, well, I went from being an insurance broker to, huh? To in the web design world. What's, there's no connection. Oh, wrong. You couldn't be more hopelessly wrong because the the skills I learned in business, negotiating, contracts, insurance, whatever, accounting, whatever I learned, I could bring that all into my new world, okay? And I did. And so I really feel that those 17 years, while it wasn't my happiest years, I certainly learned a lot to bring forward into what I do today. So, you know, I had a lot of very good mentors too in the, in those days. And mentors, by the way, if you're a younger person, is what you want to find. You want to find somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, to take you under your, your wing or their wing and um, help you navigate the world um, and really sort of finish you off because when you're in your early twenties, you're still kind of raw. <laughs> Sorry, you know you're you're not you're not a finished product. Like I guess I am a finished product. I mean, of course I change, but you know I pretty much am who I am. But when you're in your early twenties, I think you want to take the advice of somebody who's more um, who's been around, who knows how to deal with people, who knows what to say, who understands certain things that you do and you don't do. And uh, I was very fortunate in the insurance business. I had one, two, I had really about two and a half really tremendous mentors. And even though there was no web or anything, you know, like that, that I, the lessons I learned from those people, I practice today. So I would say if I'm in my like 25, 30, I'm still looking for, I'm definitely looking for somebody who, who, will in a certain way have my back and look after me. Yeah, that is something that I found as well. You know, my the start of my career has been absolutely like left and right zigzag. Nothing has been what I thought it would be. But I have learned an incredible amount that will last me. Um, Not even just about jobs, um, like about life things. I've learned a lot from coworkers and and employers and all these things that um i definitely never thought i would learn from where i'm at but i'm very grateful for it absolutely and i think we were talking about this just the other day sophia about how like i worked as a nanny for a long time and then i ended up in sales right and like i was like oh everyone no matter the age can have a tantrum right like you learn these skills along the way and even though they may not seem connected at the time like they do um connect at some point, like they do feed into uh, what you're doing next, uh, regardless of if they're related or not. Um, so I think that's a really important thing that we can all keep in mind, no matter what age we are, because um, I think maybe that's only in movies where you start on one career and then you get um, you're on the same path the entire time, like the same career path the entire time. Yeah. Something that we have yet to see is like people retiring from internet or WordPress jobs. Like, Mm. we're jumping into this world with really no expectation of what it's supposed to look like or what it's going to look like. True. Well, that's a ways for you guys to go. And 
the whole concept of retirement is changing and will be radically different in 40 years. You can be sure of that. It might be radically different in the next four minutes. You know, I mean, <laughs> who knows? But Allison, I have a question about what do you it, what about sales? What what are you in sales now? What do you sell? No, I was in sales for a time at a WordPress agency selling WordPress services. Um, and so, yeah, that was interesting to just see like the skills that you know. I didn't quite expect to come in handy, right, when they did. And my point is that I think everybody along the line should or probably maybe will take some kind of position in sales. I think because I think sales is like the number of of all the things that we do in the business world. If there are no sales, there's nothing else. I mean, it's just not I mean that so it's to me the most important job so to speak. I mean, Certainly, they're all important, but sales make the world go round. And without commerce, which is sales, we don't really have much for business. Um, so uh, no matter what we do in life, we are going to be selling ourselves, a service, a this, a that. So that's, you know, that's really important. I was, you know, I was, I always felt I would, most people get to the point in sales when they're not selling, that's when they're the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. when they're not, they're not, they're not sitting around going, "I gotta sell this." It just no, that's just not gonna. But there's all kinds of techniques. I've seen all kinds of different salespeople. I've been exposed to some tremendous salespeople, uh, which I don't claim to be. I, I'm sort of no. I mean, I'm just okay. But uh, the people I've been exposed were, I mean, that's the kind of thing you want to learn from as many people as you can. And I, I, I was very fortunate to see a lot of really great salespeople. Well, and sales isn't even just commerce or money. It's learning how to sell yourself, you know, how to present yourself. Um, well, it's, it's convincing. Yeah, it's communicating. Right, exactly. Um, and that, that really can take you very very far yeah and i always saw the one of the th- common threads of people who are really good salespeople is that you as the buyer want to do business with them they're fun they're interesting they're exciting they're silly they're whatever and i saw the and, th- th- and they're knowledgeable okay you can't be just a joke okay you got to know your product and service but what makes it different one from another is maybe it's not maybe the price, whatever. It's just, I would say like, oh, I love that guy. I want to do, I want to work with him. I want to do business with him. To me, that was always a huge uh, advantage if you had that personality. And a lot of salespeople do, you know, yeah, have that, mm-hmm. you know, A-type personality. I have like an F-type personality, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that, they don't even have a scale anyway. So I would love to know what um, what similarities you see um, having been really young in the tech space versus now. Well, I wasn't really young. I was in my early 40s when I decided I would, you know, no more insurance. And I wanted to, I wanted to, as it turned out, I wanted to be in the industry of my time. Now, I didn't think like that then, but I think that's what makes... Uh, what we do or being in the WordPress community so special is that we are in the industry of our time. If it was 1940, we'd be making cars, you know, Um, it's just, it's just more exciting. It's more relevant, important to people's lives. And I just found that to be, what was your question? (laughs) No, Uh, (laughs) I had a, no, uh, Um, that, uh, you know, that it's just, um, you're lucky if you can, if you can be that way. And going back to what Sophia said, which is you can expect, especially in the early years that your career will zigzag. It's just, you, unless, unless you're like my son who knew when he was like 10 years old, what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Most people. That's a blessing. It really is. It really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but and my mo- and my wife is that way too. But it doesn't mean that we're cursed if we don't know. 
It just means that our path is going to be a little different, maybe a little rockier, okay? But in some ways, uh, more adventurous, um, unpredictable, obviously. That can be unsettling. That can definitely be unsettling. Builds character. But uh, also rewarding in the when you look back. And only through time can you really look back and say, oh, and just make some kind of observation, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, tell us about your kids a little bit. My kids. Well, uh, I have uh, I have two children. Uh, uh, a son who's older than you guys, and a daughter who is older than you guys. <laughs> and um, they are uh, um, I, the way I look at it is, uh, fortunately, they were raised by my wife. That's not to say I wasn't around. But I did all the wrong things as a dad, quite frankly. I did too many wrong things. And she did all the right things. And so fortunately, they turned out more uh, like her than they turned out like me, you know. But that's okay. Um, and uh, they, they, they're, they're not WordPress or tech people per se, although we're all in tech in one way or another. You know, just because you're not in WordPress doesn't mean you're, in, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when they say I'm in tech, I go, okay, who isn't? You know. Yeah, true. It's very um, true. Yeah. Um, but uh, what is really right now, if we're talking about kids, it's my grand boys. And today I'm wearing a hat that they gave me for Father's Day, which is, uh, you know, Papa Buddy. I have a grandson that's three and a half and another one that's like 14 months. And they're just like, uh, medicine. They're, they're, um, my, my mother said their grandchildren are the dessert of life. Well, I'm getting overstuffed on dessert, you know. And, in fact, the oldest grandson went to his mother the other day and said, you know, Papa is like, uh, he acts like a baby. That's my, okay, three and a half years old, goes to his mother, he says, Papa acts like a baby. And she told me, so I go back to the, my grandson, I go, I heard you think I act like a baby. Whether you're a product or a site builder, OmniSend can help you with your customer or client's email and SMS through their CRM solution for WooCommerce. Product builders can bring their plugins and SaaS to a new level for their customers by integrating with OmniSend. And for you developers and agencies recommending them to your clients for managing their customer relationships is spot on because it gives them the right tool to build their email and SMS lists, send targeted campaigns, create automation workflows, and track their results all from within their WordPress dashboard. With over 100,000 e-commerce stores already on board, have your clients and your customers get started for free by simply having them search for the OmniSend plugin on WordPress.org. As a builder or an agency managing multiple sites, check out Hostinger.com. Their infrastructure brings your client's site speed, uptime, and security. Also, at your fingertips, you'll find a powerful suite of tools for security and performance, code and content management. Now add to that the ability to manage your WordPress website through WP CLI for control configuration and plugin updates, enhanced WordPress acceleration powered by Lightspeed Enterprise, control over auto updates, free migrations, and of course the essential staging sites. Through all of their services and features comes e-commerce optimization for your clients' woo shops. So when you think about it, overall, everything you need to keep your client sites running smooth can be found with their agency hosting at hostinger.com. You know, we were talking earlier too, before we started recording about um, transitioning. And uh, there's this guy named Bob Dunn. I don't know if you've heard of Bob. Mm, Maybe not. No. Yeah. Not- most Not people, sure. yeah, most Rings people, a bell. yeah, most people don't know who, who he is, and I, I remember I met him at uh, WordCamp Philadelphia. It was prearranged, like a like a prearranged marriage. Yeah, and that's a whole other story that I don't want to get into. But 
Uh, so we t- we had a really long talk, and one of the things that Bob said and really impressed upon me, and I love, I don't know if you said it this way, but it was basically, if you're doing something and it doesn't work, then do something else. Don't keep trying to fix something that probably you shouldn't waste time fixing. And Bob was really, if you look at Bob's uh, trajectory, he's really the embodiment of that. And I am sort of, I am too becoming an embodiment of that. So if you're doing something that maybe you like, and he was in the WordPress space, he was teaching and he had Bob WP and he'd be writing uh, affiliate articles and stuff like that. And eh, it was okay, but maybe not as good as it could have been for him. Then what did he do? He he said, well, I like podcasting a lot. I think I'm going to go in this direction. And of course, that was do the woo and whatever that is. But, you know, now it's mushroomed into this monster. <laughs> uh, and um, and I always remember that. So if I was like doing something in my work, let's say web design, okay? And eventually I came to understand, I don't, it's not that I don't like it. I, sh- I, I love the craft, but I, I, I hated dealing with, waiting for clients to make a decision or yeah. send me deliverables, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I said, you know, I really have to sort of re-target. Um, I, I almost wasn't conscious of this. But a couple years ago, I started saying, or actually about five years ago, it was, you know, I have all these connections in the WordPress community, but they're not really doing me any good. By that, I meant, I can't. I couldn't make any money off of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's really nice to know all these people, but boy, I just can't. You know, I I don't get a dollar from them. Mm-hmm. And then uh, one thing led to the next, and uh, Vika Singal from Instant WP said, "Why don't you make a video for me?" And that's how it started. And I started realizing, oh, I could just create content for WordPress businesses and leverage my contacts with the WordPress community, web hosts and on and that's really sort of my my where I am today and where I will be now for the for the end because I love doing it. It is the right thing for me to do. Um, it's a whole different thing. The only web projects I do now is if they beg me and it has to be a perfect fit. Okay, it's not it's not going to be a startup. It's not going to I'm not doing any of that stuff. You have to have an ongoing business that needs work. And and uh, and I was recently begged to get involved with something. And I literally because I don't want to do I don't want to go through that working on the website journey anymore unless it fits my needs. Now, I'm in a position where I can do that if I'm 25 years old. I may not be in a position to do that. I was just going to talk mm-hmm. about that. Right. You're going to take jobs and gigs and do stuff that you're going to look back and go, oh, God, I did that for money, right? Yeah, right. But that's okay because even though you did it for money and it might have been sort of a waste of time or a painful experience, only over time will you see that was not so bad. I mean, that was pretty good. Because it maybe led me to think, oh, I don't want to do that again or something. You are absolutely going to take work that you have to take, okay? And it's okay to do that. But when you reach the grand old age of... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so whenever, you know, hopefully you're in a position you're going to say, I'm only going to do what I want to do. And at my age, if you're working, you that really, you, hopefully, you don't want to do stuff that you don't want to do, you know? Um, and I think... There's a lot of value in learning what not to do as well. There's a lot of things that you learn in your 20s of like, oh, I never want to be like that manager (laughs) or I really don't like doing this. And it is just a lot of trial and error to figure out what those things are. Oh, absolutely. And especially at your age, keep your mind open to learning new things, new directions. And really, the two of you, you know, you have the if you're going to work in the WordPress space, you already have the connections, the experience, the exposure to move forward if that's the direction you want to go in. Because that's really, I mean, that's really where it's at, you know, is um, as anything else. I mean, you know, I always like sort of, I never had a network 
like I have now in the WordPress space. You know, when I was in the insurance industry, well, things were different then, you know. We didn't have the ability to connect like we have today. You had to send carrier pigeons to each other across town situation, yeah. You got it. And, I mean, that was basically, <laughs> that's about what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, we, we, imagine a world that didn't have fax machines. I mean, it's really hard to forget about email, computers, and forget that. We couldn't even send a fax to somebody. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everything moved at a very slower pace. And for some people, that's good. Um, I think today things work too fast, actually. A little bit, yeah. You know, my daughter, who's uh, a little older than you guys, you know, she's she's very um, fearful of the of the rapid change that we're, that we go through every, all the time, you know, like things that would take 10 years to change now take six months. I mean, so it's very hard for people to adapt and even young people, I think, you know, I mean, if I'm 25, um, what am I going to do with AI? You know, I'm thinking like, how, and my feeling is, of course, is going to be, hey, that's not your ju- that's not your question. Your question is, well, of course, your question is, how am I going to work with AI? Right. Mm-hmm. How am I going to get better at working with AI than anybody else? You know, because really, that's your challenge. How do I, you know, how do I work with it? I mean, it's it's going to only grow in importance in our lives, and uh, I I'm I'm. The funny thing is, even though I am my age, I look at things sort of like I would if I was 25, you know? Uh, maybe that's why I'm the first guest that you have. <laughs> because like, what, why would they, huh, me? I'm like, come on. But um, but I do sort of think, I try to see things as a younger person would see, you know, and adapt. And I'm like, learning new things is really, I think, the sort of, the whole key is not just to sit, not just to settle and say, you know, there's no reason for me to learn how to create a, a custom block, right? What do I, I'm not a developer. I'm not going to be, a, why should I learn? Well, the answer is I'm trying to learn because I want to know more about the process. What do people like developers go through? Maybe I could actually do something. So I'm always, you know, like, I'm not going to relearn stuff that I already know. I'm going to push, push yourself to to learn more, you know, and even if you say like that doesn't mean anything to me now, yeah, but and here's the thing, y- you don't know that in five, six, seven years, the thing that you're learning today may be the reason why you're going to get that job. So learning is really number one. Uh, if I'm, you know, God, I wish I had known all this stuff when I was like 25. Yeah. <laughs> I say that all the time. Boy, I, God, I wish I was like so and so, but I wasn't. You know, I, I, you know, only through um, life do you, you know, like I would, I would say things like, um, well, I would ask her if I was twenty five, I'd ask her out on a date. Yeah, when I was twenty five, I don't think I had kissed anybody when I was twenty five. Okay, <laughs> so you know. I mean, I, I, you just change, you know, and you just, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it, if you're, if you are lucky like me to have lived as long as I live, you get to my stage and you hopefully you'll say what I say. This is the best time of my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people say, like, you know, like when you're old, you know, you're going to die. And, you know, okay, I get it. But why not make this time? Why not this time? be the best time in your life. Quite frankly, the roughest times are the earliest times. Oh, yes. <laughs> See, that's why your show is important because I think you have the opportunity to help others understand that, hey, you're not alone and we're here and these are the things that we want you, that we think we could help you with. You know, I'm speaking on your behalf, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> which I do a lot for. I talk for people, but you really have that opportunity to help, not just even the younger generation, but any generation move forward. Maybe they're sort of like yeah, you know, looking for inspiration, looking for 
ways to um, better themselves, improve their career par- prospects, things like that. What I really admire about you is that you do you are surrounded by younger people, whether they be like toddlers or your kids or and I think that does help give you a different perspective on things. So I love that. Well, when you're my age, <laughs> almost everybody is younger. But here, that's not the point. Because I, I am so fortunate to have you guys in my life and people like you. And whereas I talk to people my age and their circle of friends, influence, whatever, gets smaller and smaller and smaller, Mike keeps going the other way. Which is like, it's not supposed to be that way. Well, why, why is it, why not? Why can't it, why can't I, no, why can't I grow? Why can't I meet new people? Why can't, you know, I don't, I'm not ready for like a nursing home where I'm going to like see like 10 people, the same old 10 gray hairs all day long, you know? Um, I, I really do. I have a lot of friends who are my age and older who are just sort of like, you know, all they do is watch TV, play golf, and read books. Nothing wrong with that, but if that's all you do, mm-hmm. you get tired of it. Yeah, I, I, you know, for whatever it is, um, I'm just attracted to new ideas, new thoughts, new people, new everything. And a lot of people my age are just no, they're they're just done, you know. And I, 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 I don't. I think it's very important. To, um, I mean, I, I like to do what I'm doing. Let's just say, I think it's pretty obvious, you know. And it, it, like I said, if you're really fortunate, you get to this stage of the life and you'll say, these are the best years of my life. Which to me, if some, if I was 25 and I'd heard that, I'd go, huh, you're so old. <laughs> How could this be the best time of your life? Well, you can make it the, I've made it the best time of my life. I worked at it. I thought about, what to do to make it the best of my life. You know, I changed over the last recent years to make it the best time of my life. You know, and it wasn't just a straight like trajectory. Like it got better every year. Oh, it didn't work that way. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that happened along the way, particularly in the last five or six years that got me to the point where, you know, and frankly, Hey, I got to say one of those reasons it's pretty obvious is Bob Dunn who who really gave me the courage to realize if I was doing something in my work that wasn't working, then find something else to do. And he's, you know, living proof of it. And like I say, I'm becoming living proof of it too. So uh I think those are, I think that's such good words of advice for anybody at any stage because Chances are, if you're doing something that is not working, you're miserable, or you're not as happy as you should be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. So I'm a Bob. D- I'm I'm a Bob Dunn disciple. All right, <laughs> enough of this, Bob. D- who is this guy? Who is, we don't, who is this guy anyway? We just start making T-shirts with his face on it, yeah. and we can all like pass him around. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he he's liable to want me to be one of his uh, uh, hosts. No, I don't think so. Maybe. I no, I doubt it. He, we know that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love how you are surrounding yourself with lots of people, different ages. I think it keeps your perspective open to everything. And I love your attitude towards life, a continual learning journey, right? I think that is something that um, I really admire. Yeah, that we all need to embrace. Yeah, Um it is really, I think, the key to happiness in this world. I think it's the key to staying relevant and current and useful, productive, whatever. Mm-hmm. There is no other way to do this. There is just, I don't think there's any, you know, the world is changing so fast that if you don't, um, if you don't grow in that world, then you are going to be left behind. And chances are you're not going to be very happy about that. And really, isn't it about being happy? I mean, really, when you think about it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody's always going to have more money, more clothes, more this, more that, whatever. If that's what you're chasing, you're never going to be happy. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's something that 
Allison, you and I have learned through our unschooling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Um, It's just, you know, school looked different. Sometimes school looked like going to the library and getting a bunch of shark books because that's what you enjoyed at the time. And who knows why sharks might be valuable, but you're going to learn everything there is to know about sharks and you're going to have the best time about it. And Mm -hmm. it, it, it teaches you how to learn and it encourages you to learn. Absolutely. See, that's so important, Sophia, how to learn. And, you know, the fact that you were homeschooled and learned how to learn, well, you know, that's fabulous. It's, it's, how to learn is really, because I think maybe that's a problem with a lot of people is they just don't know how to do it. Yeah. Or even where to start. Yeah. And there's everybody learns in a different way. So obviously, you know, you have to learn your your way. But... um you know, how to learn is, uh, well, you know, is your method. Yeah, absolutely. It was great talking with you today, bud. I, like I said, I admire that you surround yourself with people of all ages, that you never stopped learning, and that your message for everyone is to, you know, make the life you want, right? Like, you can change it. You can change your career. You can change your job. You can change your routine. You can Uh, change what you want to learn, right? Like, I love that. And I think it's applicable to everyone of all ages. And um, I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. Um, And I would like to ask how people can find you on the internet. Well, you can find me anywhere. Oh, not anywhere. But uh, first of all, um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on whatever. Uh, I have a website. Actually, I have two. One's Joy of WP. Not Joy of WordPress, okay? Joyofwp.com. This is my business site where I talk about, um, uh, or I, you know, demonstrate the things that I do for clients. WordPress content for WordPress businesses. And then I have this podcast (laughs) called Seriously Bud, where I interview each week a person from the WordPress community, and it comes out every Friday. And I also have a newsletter. So if you go to seriouslybud.com, that's seriouslybud.com, you can uh, see and listen to all the past episodes of currently there are 15. And uh, it's just been a joy to do that uh, podcast and continues to be. And one Sophia DeRosia has appeared on that, as well as one Kate DeRosia. I know. <laughs> I mean, I have the first family of WordPress, you know, uh, and I have this Topher guy. Eventually, I'll be doing eventually, him, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, so that's that's also been part of my transition and journey is creating that podcast. Uh, it's awesome. just been fantastic. So seriously, Bud dot com. Don't forget to go. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bud, and thank you, Sophia. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Allison. And thank you, ladies, for letting me do this. And uh, good luck on your uh, journey to do something that's really important, not just for the next gen, but for all gens. Thank you. Hey, Bob WP here, and I'd like to thank Omnisend.com and HostingYour.com for their support. Please consider checking them out. And thanks again for tuning in to all things WordPress and WooCommerce. If you're not subscribed, just head over to Do the Woo io forward slash subscribe or find us on your favorite pod player and remember you can subscribe to any of our shows directly or hear them all on our do the woo full channel feed until the next time 